Welcome to this Tutor to Use Sociology topic video on the trends in educational achievement. Now it's important when you look at the differences in educational achievement based upon social class, based on ethnicity or based on gender, that you are able to demonstrate knowledge of the key trends in achievement. Most of the textbooks will suggest that this is measured by the percentage of students who achieve five A star to C grades at GCSE and this is an acceptable way to demonstrate the differences between different social groups, even though this measurement is no longer used. These trends often show that girls do better than boys, middle class students do better than working class students, and that Chinese and Indian students tend to achieve above average, whilst Gypsy and Romani and Irish Traveller, along with black students, perform below average. Over the past few years, there's been a change in how schools report rates of achievement for league table purposes, and to show how students have progressed over their secondary education. Using these methods in essays on class, gender or ethnicity will demonstrate better application of contemporary educational policy and a greater engagement with contemporary issues in education. Attainment 8 is the new measure for schools that assigns a score to the results of each of eight GCSEs that a student sets. For example, if a student achieves grade five in English, they get five points. If they get a six in maths, they will get six points, and so on across the eight GCSEs the student sits. This will give them a total score for each student, and these are then averaged out across the whole GCSE cohort for that school, and the results demonstrate the attainment level of the school. There is another measure that's used, which is called Progress 8, which compares the scores of SATs at Key Stage 2, at the end of primary school, to GCSE scores to see how much progress a student has made during their secondary education. And these are placed into the league table as well. The aim of this is to show how much progress a student has made in a specific school and to rank that school accordingly. We're going to look at some of the most recent Attainment 8 data in this video that shows some of the intersections of class, gender and ethnicity in educational achievement. Another way to impress examiners is by showing an understanding of educational trends beyond secondary school. Often university entrance statistics reinforce some of the key differences in educational achievement. And so by looking at the progressions that students make after their secondary education, it can enhance your analysis and evaluation. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the data produced by UCAS on offers that are made to students based upon their class, their gender and their ethnicity. Now, there is a lot of data on your screen at the moment, and this has been taken from the Department of Education reports on Attainment 8 for the academic year 2017-18 to 18 that was published in March 2019. The figures in each of the boxes are the average Attainment 8 score, that is the sum of the scores given to the students' 8, 8, 8 GCSEs. There is a methodological problem with this data in that if student doesn't sit eight GCSEs, they're allocated zero for each missing GCSE, which could skew the statistics somewhat. But if we look at the average GCSE performances in the first row, in the first column, we see boys on free school meals average 31.2 points from their eight GCSEs, whereas boys who are not on free school meals average 45.6 points, which is a significant difference. As we've seen before, free school meals is often used as an indicator of social class, but can be argued to be flawed somewhat. But this data shows the impact of deprivation on students. If we move across to girls, there is a similar gap between those on free school meals and those who are not in receipt of free school meals, with girls on free school meals achieving 37.7 points and girls not on free school meals achieving 51 points. The average gap between these two groups is 14 points, which across eight GCSEs is nearly equivalent to two grades on each GCSE. This really highlights the impact of material factors on educational achievement, and this gap is present for all ethnicities and for both genders. It is noticeable, however, that the gap is lessened between those on free school meals and those not on free school meals for some ethnic groups. For example, Bangladeshi students, the gap is only six points. For white other, usually white European students, it's eight. And for Indian and Chinese students, it's 10, whilst it is its greatest for white British and white Irish. Another trend that is relatively easy to spot is that girls achieve higher than boys in all ethnic groups and all social classes. In fact, most girls, girls on free school meals are above average, with the exception of white British and black Caribbean, which indicates that girls may not feel the impact of material factors as much as boys. 
Of course, one thing to note here about white British stats is that as they are the largest groups, their results will have a greater impact on the average, which is why the statistics for white British will be far closer to the average than other groups. Okay, so we're going to break the data down into in a bit into the different intersections of class and gender and make some comparisons between similar groups. That is, we will be comparing boys on free school meals from one ethnic group with another group to see who is achieving above average or below average, as an example. Drawing the data from the table, we can see a range of ethnic groups that will achieve above average for their social class, whether they are on free school meals or not, and for their gender. And this data does show a similar pattern to when success was measured on five GCSE passes. Chinese and Indian students, regardless of their gender or class, will achieve above average, as do black African students. It's useful to note the differences between black Caribbean and black African achievements, as often students mention these groups as one and the same, but there are significant differences in cultural attitudes, and this is reflected in educational achievement. Other groups you may not have considered to be above average are Bangladeshi and Pakistani students, although only those Pakistani students on free school meals will achieve above average for, other stu for, for those who were also on free school meals. White Irish also achieve above average, with the exception of boys on free school meals who achieve slightly below. The below average groups compared to others in the same social class and same gender, Gypsy, Romney and Travellers, who were not present in the stats that we showed before, are well below averages regardless of class or gender. Black Caribbean and mixed ethnicity boys on free school meals underachieve, as do white boys and girls on free school meals. Black Caribbean girls not on free school meals are below average, but they're very close to average for those who are on free school meals, while mixed ethnicity girls perform better than the average for their social class. The key findings of all of that data is that students on free school meals underachieve compared to their peers who are not on free school meals. This is a clear indicator that material factors influence educational achievement, but to varying degrees based upon a student's culture. Secondly, there is a consistent trend of girls overachieving against boys, regardless of social class or ethnicity. This suggests that there is processes inside of the school that may benefit girls, such as issues such as gender socialization and girls' aspirations would more likely be influenced by their cultural background. And a final trend to take away from the table is that the larger gaps between white students on free school meals and their peers who are not, in comparison to other ethnic groups. There were significant gaps, sometimes 17 points, while other cultures had far smaller gaps, which leads us to question why white culture may be less resilient in the face of deprivation than other cultures. Is it food? Is it attitudes? Is it parental involvement? Or are white working class boys treated differently within the education system? Having seen the trends of achievement, it might be expected that these will be mirrored in university admissions. Each year, UCAS release an end of cycle report once students have been placed into universities. And for 2017, 2018, the data demonstrated some differences to what we have seen for achievement. While many lower tariff universities, those that were created post 1992, are fully inclusive, higher tariff universities, the Russell Group universities and Oxbridge, are more likely to make an offer to a white person than any other ethnic group. Now, this is despite the trends that show that white students underperform compared to some other ethnic groups. 75% of white students who applied to a high tariff university were made an offer compared to 62% of black students and 63.2% of Asian students. This demonstrates that despite improvement in educational performance for black and Asian students, it's not being replicated at higher levels. UCAS also measure social class differently um, when measuring offers, rather than using free school meals. They divide students into areas based upon the percentage of people going to university from that area and assign them to one of five groups or quintiles, with quintile one having lower rates of participation in higher education, usually about 10 to 15 percent of 18 year olds, and quintile five having more participation, usually 50 to 60 percent of 18 year olds in that area will go on to university. 
What the data shows that if you live in an area with low participation, you are less likely to be offered a place at a high tariff university than if you live in an area of high participation. This could be explained through a wide range of factors such as cultural and social capital. Surprisingly, males are more likely to receive an offer than females from all universities, with 80.6% of males receiving an offer compared to 77.6% of females. Now, this is despite the larger number of females in higher education and the fact that girls achieve higher than boys do. Some might suggest that this is evidence of inequality within higher education for males and females. Now that concludes our look at contemporary educational trends. Thank you for watching.